If you weren't here, now you'll have to go and listen to the YouTube videos. Don't ever forget to remind me about that, okay? All right. Yep, that's the first time this term that I forgot to turn on the recordings. So I will turn the ball onto your court. If I'm not communicating properly, if I'm not giving you what you want, you now need to tell me. Fair deal? So that I don't keep asking you every class? That's what I expect from you. All right. So, sorry about forgetting to record the first 40 minutes of the class. But fortunately, they are recorded in the YouTube videos. So just let me pull up. There's not a lot of examples from chapter S5 or chapter number six. So if you just bear with me for a moment. I'll show them to you. Okay. And of course there are the lectures with this. So problem, let me share my screen. Problem 5.4 or S5.4. In this case, you have a vehicle. And what you're trying to determine is the total cost to operate the vehicle for the 15 years. You have three components of costs. You have the cost of the vehicle, which is $17,000. You accounting students are going to love this because it's very accounting oriented. You have the cost of purchasing the vehicle, the cost of the gasoline to, to drive it. And by the way, whoever did this didn't update it. They left it in miles, but in your textbook, it's in kilometers. As far as like uh, 14,000 kilometers. So whoever did the solutions didn't update the solutions to recognize that. It doesn't matter. It's just the numbers that matter. So you have the cost of the vehicle, the cost of the gas, and then the wear and tear depreciation and and oil changes at 12 cents a kilometer even though it says mile so you can see the formulas on here there's no excel for this so but you can follow this your numbers will be different so rather than 14,000 kilometers you might have 16,000 kilometers and rather than 32 miles per gallon you might have 30 miles per gallon or kilometers per gallon <clears throat> and the price will change so you can just follow this. And so you can see that the vehicle costs $17,000, $24,609 in gas over the 15 years. So actually the gas is more expensive than the car. And then $25,200 in maintenance and repair, which is also, which happens to be the highest number of all three. So to operate this vehicle for, for, uh, 15 years is going to cost you almost $67,000, 66809 So that's one of the things you need to look at when you're per making a purchase, whether it be a vehicle or whether it be a piece of equipment, not just what is the initial cost. What are my costs to operate it? What is my cost to maintain it? So you have the three costs there. This is a very major purchase. You're spending sixty-seven thousand dollars, not seventeen. The seventeen is only about a quarter of the price. So you have this. One of the things that you can have is when you go to do your quiz and your midterm, if you want, you can either have it on your screen and you can have it printed out, even though you get different sets of numbers. So hopefully that's just a nice simple example. There's the formulas for you. And I just explained what each of the three parts are, represent. So in that particular case, it's just, you could just literally plug the numbers in and calculate. All right, next. Unless you people slow me down, I'm just gonna keep going. So if you're tired of me saying, is it okay, is it okay? I'm done doing that. If you want more explanation, put up your hand. Now, problem number 
Can you see it? Hey, David, if you don't mind, can you zoom in on that, like, increase the font size or something? I'll zoom in on the... I'll see. I'll, I'll see. Yes, thank you. See, that's exactly what I need to know. I mean, how in the world would I know that unless you bring that up, right? Can you can you see it? this one? It's not showing me whether you're seeing it or not. Can, uh, no, it didn't change anything. Didn't change anything. Okay. All right. Maybe like you know, like you know, zoom in the page maybe to like one ten or one twenty. There. Whoops. A little too much. There. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I truly appreciate that. Like, I see it fine on my screen, but <laughs> right. So. In this case, this is actually a simpler example than what it might appear. There's a there's a there's a table in your book, and there's four rows and there's four columns. But as you can see, the formula is you need to calculate the total resale value, which is simply the total of that column, the first column on the left. The total recycling revenue, which is the total of the second column. The total processing costs and total disposal costs are also the total of the columns. So it's actually a fairly simple example. What you do is you simply total the four columns. The first two are revenue, the next two are costs. So you add the, the revenues and you subtract the costs. So it's a fairly simple example of what might originally appear to look like a complex example with all this information. Total the four columns, recognize two of them are revenues and two of them are costs, Take the total revenues minus the total costs, and you can see for the first alternative, for the GF Deluxe, whatever that is, $4.53 is your, and it's a plus, so it is a profit. For You do the same thing for the premium mate with the different sets of numbers in the, in the bottom table, and you total up the revenues, Total up the costs, subtract the costs from the revenues, and you wind up with $3.23. Plus, like it's the plus is important because it means you made a profit. If it's a negative, then it's a bad idea, period. So in this case, the GF Deluxe design, this is something you'll be faced with in your jobs, has a better overall cost structure. It's it's uh, based on the res it has higher total resale value revenue. It has higher recycling revenue, but the processing costs are lower. Total processing costs are lower. And the total disposal costs are also lower. So overall, it's a better alternative than the premium mate. So that's the that's the one you should do. You should select and and follow the uh, GF Deluxe. It has a, a higher uh, profit than the revenue retrieval for the premium mate. So this has to remember, this has to do with resale revenue and recycling revenue. This is not original product. This is secondary or even third. So you have to pay attention these days to what is the resale revenue? What is the recycling revenue? So I mentioned earlier about London Drugs being able to sell cardboard boxes. So they would pay attention to how much money can they get by recycling those. And if you can sell something, a resale is simply used. Right? That's all that it is. And you can see that you can sell these things used. You may have to, you know, you also have to pay attention to like this. Do you have to reprocess it or, uh, you know, like a used car, for example. It needs to be cleaned. That costs money. It needs to be inspected. You can't just take a car in and clean it and put it on the lot. It is required that you do a mechanical inspection of it. And it needs to be roadworthy. Many years ago, they could just put it on the lot. Well, that stopped a long time ago, probably 20 years ago. 
you have to inspect the car. The, the person who's who the dealership anyways has to inspect the car and certify that it is roadworthy. So you would need to re to do the processing costs. You know, if the brake pads are worn out, you need to replace those. All right. Okay. So I'll close this. Now, I think this one should be big enough for you to see. Let me stop presenting and start presenting the new one. You let me know if it's not. I've already made this bigger before. Are you seeing the crossover points from chapter five? Is it large enough? I'm assuming it's large enough or you'll speak up. No, uh, it's good now. Okay, all right. So in this particular case, what you're trying to do, there's this complex math with it. You've got two equations. You've did this many, many times, many times when you were in, in high school, where you had an equation solving for X, you make one equation equal to the other, solve, you know, calculate the unknown, which in this case are the number of miles. What I've written a simplified version of this at the bottom. This, where you can see, let me get out my tablet here, my drawing tablet. So just, because I want, what I added, what I added is this. I don't know about you, but even for somebody who teaches math or any stuff, I look at these formulas and I got to move things from the left to the right. And, oh, my brain starts to hurt after a little while. Especially if you've been out of high school for a while. What I do is this. You have the difference in cost. One vehicle costs 29000 The other costs twenty five. So you have a $4,000 difference. That's pretty straightforward. Now, always... The item that is more expensive, the $29,000 vehicle, will have the cheaper operating costs. If the vehicle is more expensive and the operating costs are higher, well, it's literally a no-brainer. Like if you have a piece of equipment that costs $10,000 and it costs $1,000 a year to operate, and you have another piece of equipment that's $7,000 and it's only $800 a year to operate, I don't need a calculator. I don't need to take, be a business person to know that I'm going to take the one that is less expensive and less expensive to operate. That's, that's you know, even a non-business person should know that. So how do I get my $4,000 back? In this case, the 23.2 cents is the operating cost per, in this case, mile or kilometer. Again, don't worry about that. It's the numbers that matter. It's related to the 25,000. The 14.4 .4 is related to the 29. So in other words, if you see the second part of this, and I did this, I added this to the equation, because I don't know about you, but all those other numbers just like, make my brain hurt. Okay. Just a lot of numbers and it's, I'm moving stuff around and oh God, I forget algebra. Here's what you do. You take the difference in cost and you divide it by the difference in uh, kilometers or miles. So you have a $4,000 difference in the cost. That one should be really easy. You have an 8.8% .8 or sorry, 8.8 .8 cents difference in operating. You take the 4,000 divided by the 0 0.088 and you get 45,455 approximately. So you take the difference in price. So here, change in price or cost. And you take it by 
the difference in operating. cost. Does that simplify it for you? Is that a much easier way to understand it than all the, here I'll scroll back up, than this? Some of you can handle this no problem. You also have to, by the way, the part in the brackets is where you get the uh, the point two three two and the point one four four. So you take two dollars and fifty five cents divided by twenty five and multiply it by thirteen. That's where you uh, get the point two three two. I hear dead silence. This is on your study plans. It's a little bit harder and Excel doesn't do it for you. Excel will do some crossover points, just not this. All right. All right. Nobody's asking me any questions. So I will move on. I only have one more thing to present today. And I, what I did in Chapter 6, there's two examples. In the, and then we don't use Excel for either one. Well, there's no Excel built in using the Excel OM. What I did in Problem 6.3 was this. In the solution manual, they did not create a Pareto chart. All right? So what I thought I would do, and you don't have to do this. This is just extra, to be quite honest. So I, in the recording, you'll see I took the information from the solution manual, and I created and showed you how to create your own Pareto chart. All right? Bonus. In problem number six, which I'm going to show you in just a moment here, they had a Pareto chart built into the solution manual. This is what you're going to see on your test. It will draw the Pareto chart for you. So let me share the screen with you. So if you want to skip the lecture on 6.3, if you don't care about learning how to create a Pareto chart in Excel, it's very simple, then you're not going to need to do that if you're saying, but I don't need to do that for the quiz or the midterm. You are correct. How do I know that? Because I just told you that. And how do I know that if you hadn't told me that? Because uh, the study plans, the study plans, somebody's asked me, are the quizzes in the midterm going to be like the study plans? No, they're going to be exactly the same with just different numbers. That's the honest answer. All right. So if you do the study plans, you'll see the questions on the midterm and the and quiz number one. You'll get to practice them to your heart's content. And normally, and it's actually uh, a bit of a difficulty, especially even if we had face to face. One of the one of the things that. Uh, Mount Royal at this point does not have laptops as a mandatory or or tablets like a Microsoft Surface. That is not mandatory. So if we were to do this in a face-to-face -face environment, what I would do is the quiz and the midterm would be done in the computer lab. Because if I have a student at Mount Royal who does not have a laptop, or, or a tablet, because you can do these on your tablets too. The student can't take the course. That's not Mount Royal's approach at this point. So you have a quiz. All of you obviously have access to computers and you all obviously, nobody's brought up the fact, I don't have Excel. 
Because if you don't, we can get that to you. If you don't have a laptop, by the way, we can make arrangements for you to borrow one from the library. All right. So bottom line is you would go you would do your your quiz and your midterm in the lab. But you're going to do them at home. The school, by the way, does not want you going to uh, the campus. The, that is that's not allowed for employees nor for students at this point. It is literally too dangerous. And if you did go, they've got to clean, literally clean after you. Problem 613. So do the study plans. My long-winded answer was do the study plans. All right. You want to do well on the quiz in the midterm and you want to do well in this course on the test, do the study plans. All right. So they'll have a pre-done diagram like this for problem 613. This is a Pareto chart from the problem. It's already done for us. You can see that misplacing the transistors is the most common. There are 600 defects. All the way down to misaligned holes, which is the least problematic or difficult. So you know, if you're presenting this in a meeting, or if you see this information, day one on the job, Travis, Alicia, Najin, or Najin, sorry. What are you going to do? I'm going to find out why these transistors are getting misplaced. Is that what we're all going to do? That's my number one task. I'm not going to worry about board problems or them adhering to the board. And I'm certainly not going to worry about the holes being misaligned. I'm going to focus on the, mo the most common problem, which is misplaced transistors. Now, I go to people. I find out why this is happening. Why are they misplaced? What is, are people not trained properly? Or do they not have proper equipment or bins? Or like, what is going on? There could be a multitude of reasons as to why you have all these misplaced transistors. But that's my focus. And you can see the ogive line, which is that line that goes up to be 100%. If this graph was done properly, it wouldn't just be number of defects on the y-axis. It would also be percentage. Or you could put that on the y-axis on the right-hand side. So it just it's just a technique to visualize. Or, you know, I'm sure that you people in class are looking at this and say, yeah, I, you didn't need to tell me to focus in on transistors, misplaced transistors. I can read the graph. I'm going to work on the one that has 600 defects. In fact, if you look at it, the next, the next one is barely over two. And then under two. That transistors, I don't know, might be over 50%. Misplaced transistors might be more defects than all the rest put together just looking roughly. So it helps you to prioritize what you're going to focus your quality efforts on. All right. There are YouTube videos on this. If you uh, want to work on supply chain on the weekend, if you do, I'm not going to do it with your group. I did it with the other group yesterday because they don't have a class on Monday. But you actually have two classes next week. They only have one. So we'll do Chapter 7 and S7. The lectures are done for those two chapters. And those are the final two chapters for preparing for the midterm. This, starting tomorrow, what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to do the lectures. I've got what I consider... Like I do have packing to do, but I'm going to have uh, four days to do a whole bunch of videos because the next weekend I move. So I'm not going to really have time to be doing any videos. So this weekend with my, the four days, I'm planning to do, I certainly will do 7 and 7S. They'll be posted sometime. So if you've subscribed to the channel, you'll know when they're posted. And those will be done. Those are my number one priority. And then I'll start working on 
the other chapters, chapter eight and nine and some of the other chapters. And I'm actually going to try and get ahead because next week we're going to do seven and seven S. We'll go through the lectures. We'll go through the examples and we will use Excel. And then you're ready for your, your tests in two weeks. And then we'll move on to the second part of the course. So I'm going to actually try and get ahead. If some of you want to move ahead with me, you're welcome to. So, and some of the chapters are not long coming up. Some of them are. All right. Questions, comments, criticisms. Michael, great last name, by the way. Who has a question for me? I'm done presenting, by the way, if I haven't made that crystal clear. I'm here to answer questions. We are, by the way, because of, you have almost an hour of YouTube. What documents? Sorry, Alicia. I'm not sure what you mean by what documents. They're, they're in uh, YouTube. No, th uh, the only theory on the midterm and the quiz uh, will be uh, a question where you have two alternatives and it asks you which one is better. Otherwise, it's math. And that's the way we've, we've uh, trended in this course for quite a few years they're very the, the 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 midterms and the final are very math oriented and to a degree the simulations are more concepts some math all right but we are actually able to cover a lot of material because you have about an hour of YouTube. Well, you have over an hour of YouTube videos to watch if you want. And I'm able to cover material faster than writing it on the board, especially when it's in Excel. So. Hey David, I have a couple of things to sure. ask you for. Uh, first, like I would like to get the email to contact Pearson because I have issues with my XLOM software. It's in. It's in uh, the. Uh, I'll show you. Hang on a sec. Hang on. Let me let me uh, load the screen. It's it's there in case somebody else has this. All right. Let me guess. You have a Mac. No, I have no. Um, no, a PC. PC. It's a laptop. PC. Yeah. Okay. The only thing is, uh, for chapter two, where you get an option to crash it. Chapter three, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chapter three, where the option when we say like instead of okay, let me pull that up. Uh, when I press chapter three, crashing. Right beside. Right. Some people are having a bit of an issue with that. Some people is just taking time to calculate. One yeah. student told me it took takes like five minutes. Here, I'll show you. All right. So I'll show you on the screen. If you go under the Excel OM yeah. tab, you go email. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And it's there's also when you load it, it might not it might here, I'll gotta close this. All right, so hang on. I'm gonna and uh, it it kind of appears rather quickly. So just bear with me for a sec. This is recorded. When you load or all right here, I'm right. Let me share it now. I believe it does. So you've you've seen this screen before. There is enable macros. Yeah. Okay, right here. DS software. Oh, software. Oh, okay. Okay. It kind of loads quickly, and I oh, yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. how to stop that. So, right. 
and uh, yes, just make sure you tell them which edition of the book you're using, and okay. and things. Uh, I found in my own. Uh, take care, Danica. Thank you. I found in my experience now it doesn't work always. Is just going to the MyOM uh, to the MyOM Labs website and re-download. You don't have to uninstall, but re-downloading the Excel software sometimes that will solve the problem. Okay. And and by the way, if a lot of people are having problems with the project crashing, it's very simple for me to take that out of the test. You know, if if this was in a computer lab, which it will be at some point, where we'll actually go to the computer lab, it'll work there. Uh, but if, if, you know, about the third or fourth person to bring this up. So if people are having problems with that, I can show you how to do it by hand, okay? Like manually, but I can also just simplify it that um, just take it out of the quiz and take it out. It's only one question in the quiz. It's only one question in the midterm. So okay. keep me updated on that because you're now right. at least the third or fourth person is having problem with the crashing. Okay. And I don't know why that's occurring. Okay. All right. I'll show you what I'm seeing. I will press on my uh, program now. Okay. Yeah, the runtime error. Yeah, so, so the crashing here, they're showing solver help. Right. So the, I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, you should you should have you should have one that says, uh, I'll show you. I'll show you. Thanks for showing me, by the way. Okay, I'm just loading mine. Because I think mine looked a little different than yours, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so... And that happens every once in a while, and I have no clue why that happens. I'm not the this, this person who designed it. So uh, do you have the button that says show crash schedule, not run yeah, Excel that, solver? Uh, I have uh, run an Excel solver, but instead of showing showing show crash, uh, crash schedule, it's showing right. me solver help and it's taking, to me, taking me to a different PDF. Okay. Uh, usually, that's the the other people who brought it up so far. This term are Mac users. That's why I said what I did. Yeah. But uh, what you may want to do, uh, there is a way to uninstall the software and then reinstall it. I did uh, like three four times, but then 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 the, the then talk to the the software people. Oh, okay. Okay, and if they're usually pretty good at responding. Okay. okay? But with COVID, I have I have no idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but if let's say in a week from now, okay. that I, I'm prepared that even if even if you're the quote only one that's having a problem and you're not, by the way, but let's say the other people get it solved and for whatever reason yours isn't, I'm not going to quote punish you like like marks wise. I'll just take it out. Okay. Okay. Like, okay. Thank you. Like I can't show you how to do it manually. It takes yeah. more time. I mean, whatever we do in Excel can be done manually. All this does is automate it, right? Yeah. Okay. And and rather than turning it into a big deal, like going to the school to get a, a different uh, laptop, like, no, no, no. The goal is to reduce your stress, okay? Not to increase your stress. So if, if, you, if you're the only one. Yeah. Like I said, you're not. If you're the only one who can't get it to run, by saying by next Thursday, okay. Remind me, yeah, and I'll take it out. Okay, okay, and I'll take it out not just for you but for everybody. Because okay. uh, I, I I personally don't think it'd be fair to quote punish you because your laptop because it's not working on your particular device. Yeah, well, I'll try on my desktop as well and see. Sure, no, ex so. yeah, exactly. So, thank you for sharing that. And like I said, I've received a couple other emails, even one last night. Mm -hmm. uh from a student 
my goal, and I've been stressed, it's been stressed to me, reduce students' angst, reduce students' stress. Mm -hmm, okay. I just take it out. Problem <laughs> solved. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know. Sure. Appreciate it. Okay. And regarding the the YouTube videos that you post, mm -hmm. I like, can you like zoom in all those old problems when you do that? If you do, that would be great. Okay. You mean like in the Excel and stuff like that? Yeah. Excel. Excel is kind of okay. Okay. Uh, but the word was kind of pretty difficult for me to read. So if it could, okay. that would be great. Okay. I will try and do that. See, that's the, that's the exact kind of, you know, I kind of thought about that a little bit, but yeah. nobody's brought it up. So I figured, oh, okay. Or I thought you could change the size yourself was quite frankly. Like I could do that. Like it's a video, right? I could like uh, stretch the screen or full, make it, make it full screen. Mm -hmm. Excel was good, but not the word one. So which okay. is pretty. Uh, oh, I'll do, no, that's good. That's a good comment. I'll either change the font size. Or okay. I'll or I'll change. I do. I do. Uh, uh, yeah. Which also because you know there are some people who have some issues with visual impairment, and if I can just make it easier to read, that's uh, you know it's a little bit more work. But once I've done it, then it's done forever, right? Like, yeah. I've, okay. I've even had students ask me to write larger on the board. Like oh. okay, like <laughs> that's difficult to do because you have a limited amount of space. Anyways, uh, thank yeah. you. But like, and today if I forget, you remind me. Yeah. Okay. I was like, even like, oh, uh, when you today, uh, today when you increase the size of the word to one sixty five percentage, that was perfect. You know. Okay. So. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you. That's exactly the kind of feedback I need. I mean, okay. literally, how else would I know? Yeah. Right? That's right. Thanks, Dave. Have a good yep, weekend. Take care. You have a great weekend. Any other questions from anybody? Hey, Aaron. Alrighty then. Everybody have a great day.